Hello and welcome to this Power Tools 4.7 demonstration. Today we'll be working with Power Tools 4.7 and K2 4.7. So Power Tools does support the latest version of K2. If you would like any information regarding Power Tools in terms of automation and how automation can benefit you, what's the return on investment, and understanding automation at a higher level, feel free to contact us via PowerTools at jlabs.com.au. Today, I will be focusing on PowerTools at a functional level. So what we're looking at now is the PowerTools home interface. We can see all of the major features that are available to PowerTools down the left-hand side main menu. Above that, we have the environment selector. So you can connect to multiple environments from the one machine. For example, a K2 administrator may wish to have access to the dev, the test, and the production environment, and you are welcome to connect in such a way. You can add and remove environments from the home page and manage your licenses. So we can see, looking at the bottom left, uh, this license expires well into next year. We can also manage settings, and these settings are on a per environment basis. So we can set up our outgoing mail settings. We can also configure prefix settings. So we have some that are automatically set up by Power Tools. However, you can change those to fit your particular organization's naming conventions. You can choose how you want to load data from the Smart Object Space. So in this case, I've chosen to load the first 50 records or the latest 50 records that are available but you can also choose to load all records or a particular number of your choice. We can also choose whether or not to automatically generate testing reports. So Power Tools can automatically generate matrix reports for every test that you execute and you have the option of disabling that if you so wish, but I like to have that available to me. Finally, you can also set up smart form runtime URL settings. So this is really important when we wish to do smart form testing uh, and interact with our smart forms by power tools. So I certainly encourage you to have that one set up as well. In the main center of the screen, we can see we have a result summary here. We can also see a work list and this is the work list for the current user. So if we look to the top right hand side, that is the administrator account. The my work list is also available via the main menu. And from here, I can see key information such as a view flow. So we can see whereabouts this particular task is sitting within this workflow. We can see where it's been, the path that has been taken, and we can also see where it could potentially lead to as well. I can view context data, so key information, data fields and their current values, and if relevant, XML fields. So I can view a lot of information about a particular task all in the one place. Now, as someone who has been a K2 administrator, I know that using native administration tools can be very painful and you end up with four or five different tabs open, looking at different things and constantly switching between. However, with Power Tools, we are providing you all of this information all in the one place to make it as easy as possible for you to very efficiently respond uh, to requests from your users. You can also redirect tasks to users and delegate tasks from here. So I can do this for any of my tasks. I have the option of searching if I so wish. So I can search for a particular work list item. So I can type in empty and any empty folio will be listed here. I can filter based on which process I wish to work with as well. And also statuses such as allocated, available, open, etc. I can, of course, refresh at any time. So if we look to the management work list now, uh, we can see that this works the same as the My Work List. However, we can see work lists for any user within the environment. So this is no longer restricted to My User. I can also see, once again, the view flow, context data, data fields, and XML fields. I can still filter. I can still search. I can filter based on process, but also the destination user. So if Sally calls me and wishes to find information out about a task or has an issue with the task, I can filter by 
her particular user and then very quickly find out the information that she seeks. We can also monitor processes. So if I go to process management and monitoring, here we can perform admin tasks for our processes. So here I can see information about how many active, running, error, stopped, completed, and deleted instances for particular workflows. So this is for the entire environment. We can generate environment comparison features as well. So this is a great admin feature available to our Power Tools users. We can load multiple environments. So for example, I might have the test and the production environment loaded up. And we can compare those two environments. And Power Tools will analyze and let you know where the discrepancies may lie. Now this is a great feature for uh, anyone who works in an organization, such as many of our customers, where there's a lot of pressure to keep the UAT environments and the production environments as in sync and aligned as possible. So being able to automatically generate reports that allow us to very quickly identify where the discrepancies are uh, is certainly a very powerful feature and it's certainly a lifesaver for uh, many of our customers. We can also perform an environment report, which is kind of like a health check. Uh, so we can generate a report based on many different components. So you can see here we have many options to pick from and Power Tools will automatically analyze this information that we've selected and let us know uh, all the information that we seek from a K2 standpoint. So that's very cool indeed. And that can, of course, be saved as a PDF. We can print it directly and, of course, email that as well. So in terms of administration, those are our pure administration features that are available. But we also have uh, some very cool testing features. So when we build our K2 applications, we usually start with our smart objects. So we build our data source to which we will integrate into workflow and also provide UIs for using views and forms. But first, it's our smart objects. So I can view a list of all smart objects from within this particular environment through the smart object space. Here I have an XML report that I can generate. So I can create Excel reports. I can categorize these smart objects as well. So these are the categories that you would find within your smart object tester. Uh, and also from within your K2 designer. As mentioned, I can search for a particular smart object. So using the search bar, I can search for anything that matches EMP. And I'm looking for this smart object, which is in reference to employee. So if I double click on that smart object, uh, it'll take me to the data that's sitting there within. So we have one record at the moment. And any object details can also be viewed. So I can have a look at a smart object definition in XML. And I can also have a look at key information such as what methods are available, who created it when it was last modified, etc. So here we just have the default methods available. However, in the case where you build your smart objects based on SQL tables, and you might have some custom stored procedures that you're referencing as part of that, which can be accessed via the smart object, we can also view those and we can certainly test those. So if you have custom built K2 applications based off SQL, we can also test those as well. We're not restricted by that at all. We have the Dependency Explorer. Now the Dependency Explorer is available throughout the Smart Object Space, Smart Form Space, and Process Space. So the we can view this dependency explorer in anywhere within these spaces. And what we can do is we can select a particular K2 artifact, whether it be a smart object, view, form, or workflow. And we can ask Power Tools to analyze how that particular artifact interacts within the environment. So here I can see all of the other artifacts that in some way reference this smart object. So we can see we have a couple of forms, we've got some views, and we've got a workflow also. So if I have an issue with this smart object, for example, let's just say that this smart object is referencing SQL that we've built. And we have an issue because we've upgraded our SQL server and that's broken some links. We can very quickly say, okay, Power Tools, let me know what's going to be affected by this by going to the smart object and checking the dependency explorer. I can work out 
which K2 applications within my organization and environment are going to be affected. And then I can proactively request the relevant outages. And this is very important because we wish to minimize the impact on our users whenever possible. So Power Tools will certainly allow us to you know, be proactive and, and very quickly respond to any issues found. And this will help us improve buy-in because we, we always want to minimize you know, the impact that our users have and improve their experience whenever possible. So from the Power Tester, I can test smart objects. So I've got a preloaded script here ready to go. So here we can see I am testing my create, load, save, get list, and delete methods. So that's all of the methods that are available for this particular smart object. I can also create script variables. So here I've created a record ID. Now the advantage of this is I can create a record and store the ID. I can then use that ID to load data, to update data, and delete data. So the reason that I really want to you know, capture that ID is very much so that I can delete that data when I'm finished my test. Now this is important because we don't want to bloat our K2 environments full of test data. So being able to capture that ID and then use that to clean up, I think is a very powerful feature and certainly allows us to minimize our footprint on our K2, but also maximize our testing capability. So smart object space is something that I'm really big on. I love being able to confirm that my custom SQL smart objects are working as expected. So we have XML that we can modify as well. I can view the current test result, if applicable, and any existing results. So here we have a pre-existing result. I can review a result summary, very specific step-by-steps, but also a result matrix. So any test that I conduct within my K2 environment through Power Tools will have a result matrix stored, providing that I have that ticked in the settings. Now these reports can be exported to PDF, printed and emailed. And we can see that key information is displayed about the test and how we went. So this could then be communicated to management or simply stored in a document store just so that we have a history of what testing we've done. So I can run this script now. We can see all of the methods being tested one by one. All of those tests have passed and we can see that in the result summary. If I look at the test result specifics, I can double click to see what the results were. So if I double click here, I can see exactly what was created. I then used that ID to load. I can then update that. So here I went from the test manager to the test director as the employee manager. And if I run the get list method now, I can now see that we have test director there. So that updated appropriately. And finally, I can go to the delete method and we can see that we deleted that particular ID. So if I go now back to my employee, I can go to the data, refresh that, and that data is not there. So that was a successful self cleanup. So I'm very happy with that result. We can also do some test assertions through the smart object space. So I can confirm key piece of information. I can see whether something equals a certain value or is greater than or not greater than, etc. I can check count, averages, sums, mins, max, etc. I can also enter random data. So we can generate random dates, random text strings random numbers, etc. We can also create functions. So we have a list of functions that are available. And you can see here we have quite a lot available. So we can create random surnames, random full names, random email addresses, phone numbers, etc. So that covers our smart object space nicely. We can check out the smart form space. 
Once again, we can see a list of all the relevant artifacts from within our K2 environment. I can categorize these once again, and these correlate directly with those found within the K2 designer. We can generate an Excel report of all this information as well. Just as we saw previously, I can search for a particular artifact that I'm looking for, and I have a submit form here. I can double click on that form, and that will take me to the particular form in question, and we can now see a runtime of that. So here we have the form exactly as we would see it, and I can interact with that just like I can in my web browser. Once again, we do have the dependency space. So I can see that this particular form is dependent upon these views, which is what make up the form, and also this particular workflow. So I could double click on that workflow, and now I've been taking straight to that particular workflow within the process space. Now, I could return via the main menu on the left-hand side to where I was, but we also provide some nifty little user experience benefits, such as navigation buttons. So these work exactly the same as what you would expect to find in a web browser, such as Google Chrome. So I can see exactly where I've been, the full path, and I can return very quickly. Now, if I go to the Power Tester, we can see we do have a script already created, but I think I might create a new one now. So we can see that on the bottom half of the screen, we do have the runtime once again, and this is why it's so important that we have our runtime URL set up within our settings, as it allows us to see this information. PowerTools has analyzed the form and identified all of the controls, and we can see that they've all been listed and concatenated appropriately. So they've all cascaded down here. And we can also view the tabs. So one thing that I can do is go through all the relevant controls. You may not wish to set values for all of them, but you can set for the ones that are relevant. So here I can set a value for testing purposes. Alternatively, what I can do is I can enter all the relevant test data that I wish to use. And pick a date here. Now, if I press the snapshot button now, what PowerTools can do is analyze the form and identify all the data that you've selected. Now, if I go to the department, I can see that for this particular control, being the department text box, the value that I have entered has now been automatically placed as part of that test. So rather than me needing to go one by one and manually set the controls, I can either enter the form as I expect the user to, or perhaps I might even ask the user to come to my workstation and enter in some data for me to get an accurate test, and I can simply snapshot that information. Once again, if you wish to do some random based testing, we can also use functions. So we can use functions to enter random text, numbers, dates, emails, countries, state, address, etc. With buttons, I can choose whether or not to enable those. So for example, I may wish to press the create button, but then again, maybe not. So by default, the buttons won't be clicked, but you do have the option of executing that. So I can execute this script now. And we can see on the bottom half of the screen, we have a runtime again, and we can see the form being interacted with automatically by Power Tools. And the data that I selected as part of my test is being entered now, automatically. So I didn't have to touch the form, it's all being done on my behalf. So PowerTools has automatically entered all the data that I have requested and pressed the right buttons, the right tabs at the right time. So PowerTools will execute this script in the exact order that you see here. We can reorder those, so for example, I may wish to test my tabs as the very first thing. So I can switch between my tabs automatically just to confirm that they work as we expect. So we have a lot of power in terms of 
which order executions occur and what actually occurs when we do execute. So that's very cool. I can execute changes to my scripts once again via XML for those of us who are really passionate. We can view the current test result and any existing results from the past. If we so wish, we can also integrate our form scripts with our workflow test scripts. So in that case, you would want your submit button to be clicked because you need to submit the form to initiate the workflow. But you can also test forms as an individual item, which is what I have done here. So once again, I can go to my process space now. And as I mentioned, I can test my workflows as individual entities. So for example, I could go to the process space, I can refresh that at any time, and I can categorize this information. So I can go to my test process, for example. If I double click here, I can see that some options are available now. So once again, we have the dependency explorer. As mentioned, that's available in our process space as well as our smart object and smart form space. We can view an instances space, which will show me any instances of this particular workflow. I can view context data, data fields, and XML fields. So here we can see the path that was taken is highlighted in green, and the red path represents the path that was not taken. I can view data, version upgrade as well. So for an active instance, one thing that I could do is migrate that to a newer version or an older version of the workflow. So if we check out one of our finance workflows, for example, I could check out the capital expenditure request approval. So if I go to instances here, we have a few that are here and we can see that we have an error. So one thing that I could do where relevant, perhaps there's an error because there's a field name, uh, sorry, a field value that's required for a particular workflow for it to progress. Now, for whatever reason, that field value was not set and now we've hit an error. So one thing that I could do is I could on the fly update this value. I can press the update button and then I could retry that particular instance and it should then be able to progress. So in some cases, you may be relying on a particular field value to be able to progress. So we can certainly handle that particular issue. And we can also upgrade to a different version. So perhaps you've created a new version of a workflow which has an error. And one thing that you could then do is migrate that particular instance or any instances on that version to the previous version which you know is stable. Alternatively, you may have identified the issue and created another new version which rectifies that problem. So you could migrate all of those instances on that version to the now fixed version. So either way, we can downgrade and upgrade. That's not a problem. You can choose whether to just stay wherever you are within the workflow. You can redirect to the current activity or you can move to a very specific place. So you could any, any position within the workflow you can move to. That's not a problem either. If you so wish, you can also remove instances. So the general instances space is also available down the left-hand side main menu. This is the same in terms of functionality. However, we're not restricted to that particular process. So you can filter by processes, of course, but that will be automatically handled from within the process space because we work on a process by process basis. You can filter based on the originator as well. So we can check out versions of a workflow. So for the capital expenditure approval, I can check out version three versus version one. So I can sync the UI and I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I can very easily see very quickly that there is a difference because they do certainly have some discrepancies there. It appears that version one is mostly a shell, whereas version three has been nicely fleshed out. I can manage process rights, so I can give rights and also take rights away. I can view which activities are available. So for example, we have four different approvals. But also, we can set Power Tools managed rules. So we can set additional notifications, escalations, or approvals. This is an additional layer 
created and managed by Power Tools. So this doesn't actually directly modify your workflow and you don't have to perform deployments. This will all be handled by Power Tools and of course you can remove it at any time. We can also automatically generate documentation based on our workflows. So I've got one here that I've created in the past. I can load that up now and we can view a view flow and we can see activities, events, data fields, what line rules are available, destinations, etc. So all this information can be provided automatically by Power Tools in a nice report that we can print or export to PDF and email to management. So one thing that we could do is every time we release a new version of a workflow, we create a Power Tools document for that so that we've got a well-documented environment. If there are significant differences between the environments or between two versions of a workflow, that will be highlighted in red by Power Tools. So anything that's new or that's been renamed, etc., will all be highlighted. So if you have an issue with a new version of a workflow, you could generate a document of those two versions and very quickly identify where the problems may lie because generally you would think it's something that's been changed or added that is most likely the root cause of your error. So it allows us to be very efficient when identifying issues as well. If we go back to our test process, we can check out the Power Tester. So here we have a test process that's been created. But what I might do is generate a script for that now. So I can click the Generate Script button, which will automatically generate tests. So here, we can see that there's two workflow actions that have been set up. So these are two different instances that will be executed. So we have two possible scenarios. We can submit the workflow and the manager can approve it, which has automatically been selected. So you can manually select which action to take, but in this case, approved has been automatically selected. Also, we've got rejected. So that's been automatically selected once again. So you can manually set all this information. However, when we generate a script, Power Tools will do whatever it can to minimize the amount of input from you. So we can create test asserts. So we can check particular pieces of information and confirm values. We can create custom asserts against data fields, XML fields, smart object data, script variables, or custom references to DLLs. We can also reference contexts, contextual information such as the status, the destination user, etc. And we can also confirm information from an email notification. We can set action users. So for example, you may have a series of test users that you use as part of your testing. And we can say for this particular activity, I want this particular test account. So you might have a test manager, a test director, a test team leader, etc. And we can certainly allow you to use those as part of your testing. We can also set action delays if we want to test escalations. Now one thing that I can do is run this script. So we can see we've got two workflow instances that have been automatically created by Power Tools. And we can also view live exactly what's being followed. So we can see the path taken. And we can see here that's been highlighted in green. The path not taken was highlighted in red. If we go to the other test, we can see that in this case, we did in fact reject and that's been highlighted in green appropriately. We can see every step that was taken. We can view context data, data fields, and XML fields. So all of that information has been automatically captured and presented to us. So that pretty well covers our process space. We can also check out the test scheduler. Now this is one of the really cool features of Power Tools is we can schedule our test scripts. So for example, you could test a particular smart object or a series of smart objects all at once at say 6 a.m. every day. Then in the morning you can check to see whether those scripts have passed or failed and you can take action accordingly. So for example, if you have a smart object that's connected to an SQL database and something goes wrong with that database, a connection is broken and the Power Tools script will fail. This will allow you to very quickly react and you can take out the necessary outages, once again contributing to the minimization of 
effects that can happen on the user and you know, help improve that user experience. You can then take the relevant action and then you can release the app once again. So it's all about having the ability to be very preemptive and become very aware of your K2 environment. We can also create projects. So for example, we have the travel request project. You can tag scripts against projects and then you can schedule projects or execute projects on the fly, which will allow you to test an entire application based on all the tests that have been tagged appropriately. We can also create test plans and from here we can use test cases and each test case has relevant test steps. You can then test all the possible paths, for example, with a process. Maybe with a smart object, you could test all the typical use cases that you have for your testing. And then once you execute a test plan, the test reporter will automatically generate those reports for you that could then be communicated within the organization. Now, finally, I would just like to talk about the theme installer. So with Power Tools, we can install custom themes. So at Jellabs, we've created a few custom K2 themes, which are very cool. Uh, you can check those out. They're free with Power Tools. So when you install Power Tools, you can feel free to check those out and install them into your K2 environment, and then you can use those as well. Our guys are working on more and more themes as the days go by, so I'm sure you'll be seeing some more cool themes uh, with future Power Tools releases. So if you would like to uh, evaluate Power Tools for free, you are very welcome to do so. Uh, you can access that via the Power Tools website at www.powertools.com.au. If you need any assistance or have any queries about Power Tools, you're always welcome to pop those through to us via powertools at jlabs.com.au. I'd like to thank you once again for your time. I hope you have a very good Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks, guys.